hopefully you can see the presentation. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Go ahead. Of course. Yours. <laughs> Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, so we are going to talk about the British Film Institute's Heritage 2022 videotape digitization project, which is currently underway. As we both work in data and digital preservation, our focus will be on discussing the specific work managed by our team. In doing so, we hope to demonstrate how the automation of microservice workflows efficiently manages our high volume file throughput. So firstly, a little bit about the project. Um, so the videotape digitization is just one strand of the Greater Heritage 2022 project here at the British Film Institute. The aims of the videotape digitization strand is to digitize and preserve up to 100,000 works from the United Kingdom's regional and national archives, which from now on and for brevity, we will call RNAs. Um, these works are all on at-risk videotape carriers. This risk may be defined as degrelescence, the theory that videotape collections are at imminent threat of obsolescence and degradation, both of carriers and of playback equipment. And lastly, but just as importantly, the technical skill sets which operate and maintain them. The primary focus for this project is therefore one of preservation. The capture or digitization of videotapes is undertaken by an external and an in-house framework supplier network and again, for brevity, we will refer to as FSNs. The external supply, suppliers hailing from both the United Kingdom, Germany, and the Netherlands. Over to Michael. Thank you, Lizzie. Okay. Following capture from videotape, this FSN delivered the digital files to the BFI National Archive as V210 logs. These files then progress through validation, transcode, documentation, and ingest workflows the automation of which is managed by microservices. These microservices consist of a suite of Bash shell and Python 3 scripts. The scripts are scheduled as cron jobs on a cron tab. The cron tab automates their deployment on Ubuntu Linux servers at user-defined intervals. All of these workflows allow for manual intervention, segregating files for review with helpful logging where anomalies should arise. The v210 models are transcoded to and ingested as FFE1 Matroska into the BFI's National Archives Digital Preservation Infrastructure, or DPI. At a later stage, these files are returned to the constituent RNAs in batches in their preferred preservation format. This can be V210MOV, ProResMOV, or ffv one Matroska. Okay, the V210MOVs are delivered by the FSN using IBM's file transfer solution, Aspera. The online Aspera console, which you can see in the right of the screen, allows for transfers to be monitored in real time with both problematic and successful transfers logged. Should network issues or connectivity problems hamper delivery, these can be easily identified within the console. And also file delivery reports can be produced in an, odd, in an ad hoc basis or scheduled for regular occurrence. The files are delivered via Spera to a dedicated H22 GRAC NAS, with each FSN having access to their own and only their own folder structure. You can see this on the right hand side of the slide. Files first land in the transfer in progress folder in the top right. When the transfer is completed, or rather when the FSN is satisfied it's completed, they will cut the files into the validate folder. The validate folder is the first of our hot folders. And from here, the files enter the first automated H22 workflow stage validation. Validation of MOVs in the hot folder is carried out using Media, Info, Media Area's free and open source performance and implementation checker, MediaConch. MediaConch ensures that the video file's technical metadata conforms exactly to the agreed project specification. MediaConch's CLI permits implementation in our scripts, whereas the GUI has a useful facility for probing issues or sharing user-friendly visual results to others. Policies can be easily shared and imported exported as XML or built from media info data extracted from exemplar files. In our case, files are first checked against our agreed PAL specification with the H22 media conch policy on the right hand side of the slide. Okay, so the first bash script we will look at is a simple one. We can call it H22 media conch check.shell. The script begins by overwriting the current date and time to a log file named media conch check.txt. 
It calls on MediaCoinch to check every dot mod from each FSN validate folder in turn against the PAL policy and subsequently appends the pass or fail output to the MediaCoinch check log file. Our next script, h22 MediaCoinch move.shell, utilizes the log file we've seen in the previous slide. MediaCoinch check log is gripped for pass output per FSN and using the Linux tool parallel, successful files are moved to the top level of the FSN folder and this move is written to MediaCoinch move.txt. Similarly, MediaCoinch check.txt is next gripped for fail and the requisite files are moved to a failures folder. Again, this input is written to MediaCoinch move. So we've just seen the v210 mobs that didn't pass our PAL check are now in the failures folder. From here, these files are tested for conformance against our other H22 policies in turn where necessary. These include an NTSC one on the right, and also include HDCAM 720 and HDCAM 1080. This process is essentially the same. They're checked with MediaCoinch and the results appended to a log file named for that policy. This log file is then kept for pass, to which files move to the top level of the FSN folder or fail and the files remain in situ and the process repeats with the next policy. Should the file then fail to conform to any of our policies, a resupply request may be made to the relevant supplier. Here's, here's just a few examples from our logs. As you can see, they are very straightforward and hopefully human readable. At the top of the screen is MediaCoinch check.txt, but in this case, all passes. In the middle is MediaCoinch move.txt, which describes the move of the files to either the failures folder or progression to the next stage. Lastly, at the foot of the screen, you should see an example of a failure output, including the fields which were problematic. This output can be used as a basis for discussion or when required, appended to a supplier's resupply request. Okay, now let's progress from validation onto transcode. The V210 mobs are transcoded to F51 Matroska with the script H22 transcode shell, the first page of which should be on the right hand side. F51 wrapped to Matroska is the BFI's preservation format of choice, but why F51 Matroska for this project? As we know, F51 is a lossless compression codec, which often yields files at approximately 40% the size of uncompressed. One of its many benefits, therefore, to the archive is the significant storage cost savings. When you consider again that the project aims to preserve 100,000 works into its DPI, the savings will be vast. So the Matroskas themselves are encoded in a QNAP mass to ease the processing and storage burden impacted on the GRAC. Firstly, the script declares the folder paths it will use and timestamps the h 22 transcodelog file. For the next step, the source mob's mine type is established ensuring the file is AV. The file is run against FF Pro. Should no result be returned, the file is deemed invalid. The failure logged and transcode does not progress. An output file name is wrangled next, including a partial dot prefix, which also goes to ensure that no other instances of transcode are underway on this file. The FrameMD5 folder is then probed for the existence of a source mob FrameMD5. Presence would indicate duplicate delivery or a previous transcode attempt proven unsuccessful. Just going to pause you. Apologies. I think our slides have kind of got a bit we crashed. slightly. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, just uh, apologies. Let me re screen, share the screen. Um, they were fine, uh, the, oh. the slides. Were well, they working okay? Sorry, yeah, they were it, just, okay. it just must have yeah. been my screen. It just decided to. Um, apologies, sorry about that. Let's know if you can see That's this. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, just go back to where you were. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, good. Uh, yeah. Microsoft PowerPoint oh. says something. Yeah. Um, but that's I, you could still see we can still see the slide about segmentation and documentation. Ah uh, no, sorry. Yeah, that's <laughs> apologies. That seems to have just uh, we can get this fixed. Let's progress with the slides if needed. Yeah, let me let me power down PowerPoint and reopen. 
Sorry, everyone. That's fine. It's all right. <laughs> Just take your time. Okay, so. How are we doing for time, by the way? There's a question from Kieran. Perhaps we can do that in between. Yeah. Uh, and Lucy can take her time to uh, start with the PowerPoint. Um, Kieran has a question. Has there been any strain on using uh, NAS itself to perform the encodes? I think because we encode from one NAS to another, it kind of overcome that. I think originally we tried to do everything on the same GRAC and it was basically breaking it. But now the load is shared across two, that's why it's not the same. So um, okay. there are many tasks going on in that QNAP. So there are occasions when it's it's strenuous, certainly, but it's yeah. certainly made it more manageable, I would say. I think I've got it working again. Again, yes. sorry everyone yes. about that. I'm just going to, um, yeah, just go back from where it was. Right? Where were you? Slide, slide 12. Slide 12. Yeah. That one, I think. Can you see slide 12? Yes, I think that's the right one. I hope so. Um, okay, I'm going to start that section again, just to be clear. For the next step, the source mod's mine type is established, ensuring the file is AV. The file is run against FF Pro. If no result is returned, the file is invalid. The failure log and transcode does not progress. An output file name is wrangled, including a partial dot prefix, which also ensures no other instance of transcode is underway on the file. The frame MD5 folder is then probed for the existence of a source mod frame MD5, presence of which would indicate duplicate delivery or a previous transcode attempt proven unsuccessful. Should a frame MD5 exist, it is then deleted. A fresh frame MD5 is here created using method memory. Moving on further into this script, the source mod input width is checked with media info. If the width equals 720, then the video is deemed to be PAL and the first FFmpeg transcode recipe is executed. Do you see that on your screen? Mm -hmm. Should the video width not be 720, the video standard is presumed to be NTSC and the second transcode recipe is called. Note the only difference between the two are the different color metadata parameters for PAL and NTSC respectively. Next slide. Okay. Next, the FrameMD5 folder is probed for an output FrameMD5 and deleted where found. A fresh output FrameMD5 is created at an But then the Matroska file size is calculated to ensure it's not a failed zero byte transcode. A diff check is then run against both FrameMD5s. Should the difference be null, then the transcode can be deemed successful. The partial dot prefix is removed from the Matroska file name. The source mod moves to an original folder where it's automatically deleted and the two frame MD5s move to a pass folder. If the difference does exist, however, then the transcode has been unsuccessful. Consequently, the Matroska is deleted, the source mod moves to the error folder for investigation, and the frame MD5s moved to a failure folder. Okay, so if the file is successfully transcoded to FFV1 Matroska, then three processes happen, segmentation, documentation, and ingest. Within our collection, we have single videotapes that contain multiple programs. For preservation, we want each program to have its own preservation file and collections information database, SID for short, record. The digitization framework suppliers are digitizing whole tapes. And so at this stage, the file needs to be split into its individual programs. In order for successful segmentation to happen, a few things must be in place. It relies on timings metadata in the collections information database record. It cannot segment without it. And the timings metadata is validated. It has to be well formed and logically sound, e.g., no start and end overlapping, and no characters that it won't accept. If these are not present, the files will not split and they are adding to a splitting issues log to be investigated manually. However, if those are in place, it uses FFmpeg stream copy to create segmentation outputs. It adds intelligent start and end overlaps to avoid data loss through error and uses frame MD5 to confirm lossless video copy. Once the segmentation has completed, it starts the documentation process. And this includes an automated creation of new records in SID for our FFV1 Matroskas with a source derived relationship to the videotape item. 
Python scripts which use REST API of our collections database to create records over the internet, and timings metadata from the videotape gets recalculated and stored in the FFV1 Matroska record, identifying non-video sections and start and end timings. Once successfully segmented and documented, the file is moved into the ingest workflow. This process includes Python scripts which automate, file validation, so checks that the file name is validated and correct, the file extension and basic compliance. The creation of record and media ingest jobs in the Media Asset Manager with Transcode. The checking and preservation outcomes on data tapes with an MD5 checksum comparison and deletion of the local file where bit perfect preservation to tape is confirmed. The Media Asset Manager is integrated with the collections database to automate, linking the databases together with unique identifiers, sharing UMIDs, the unique material identifiers for files between the Media Asset Management System and the collections management system, and then the deletion of collections management records where, when preservation object is deleted. Okay, with the files now successfully ingested to our DP attic, we now need to consider and implement the return of the files to each participating regional or national archive. As well as retaining the files in DPI, we ensure copies of preservation files alongside accompanying H264 MP4s are returned to the RNAs on LT06 or 10 terabyte hard drives. The preservation files are returned in the RNAs preservation format of choice, which, as I said before, was FF1 Matroska, V210 mod, or ProRes mod. To retrieve the Matroskas from storage, a download script parses the CSV of UMIDs and files are batch downloaded into the RNA folders and then renamed to our convention. At this stage, Matroskas which require it are then transcoded to V210. And again, should, should they require it, the V210 mods are transcoded onto ProRes 422HQ mod files. The Python script batch transcode h 22 ffe one v 210py with a mouthful, carries out the initial transcode to v210. The script itself is structured around 10 separate functions. I'll quickly outline, outline them one by one. So get color. This retrieves the ffe one Matroska color primaries and matrix data using media info, as you can see on the right hand side. Get interlace. The Matroska's interlace or progressive status is established from Media Info's scan order metadata field. Change path. This creates paths for the transcode, file moving, failure, or logging if required. Create FFmpeg command. The FFmpeg transcode recipe is pieced together using the color, scan order, and file path data obtained previously. Conformance check. The mob is checked against a media conch policy. Make frame md fives. Both source and output frame MD5s are created with FFM. Diff check. Linux command diff is used to check both frame MD5s are identical. Any mismatch is a failed transcode. Fail log. Appends any warning messages to the fail log. Cleanup. Manages the conformance check process. Pass means the source Matroska is deleted. Fail leads to the mod being deleted. And main. This receives and validates file paths from the bash shell launch script and also orchestrates and executes all the other functions. For the three RNAs who require ProRes 422HQ preservation files, the V210 mods are passed to the next transcode script. I think we may have. <laughs> well, I think we may have got stuck again. You carry just on. Carry on. Yeah. So this script is very similar to the last. It's built on five separate functions. So it's got change path, as we've seen previously, Create FFmpeg command, which outputs the transcode command. Conformance check, which checks our new ProRes mob against media conch policy, a fail log. And cleanup, which runs the media conch check of the completed ProRes 422HQ mob. If passed, then source Matroska is safely deleted. If failed, then the ProRes, ProRes mob is deleted. Main, again, this receives file paths from the bash shell launch script and orchestrates other six functions. I'll just quickly get to that slide so you can actually see it. Hang on. Oh. You'll be fine. <laughs> Nearly there. Still, Nearly there, still yeah. Have five, yeah. You still have five minutes. Uh, five minutes, Michael. thank you. Yeah? Okay. Okay. 
There he is again. <laughs> I think that's the one you've just described. Yeah, I just described it so you have a quick 10 second look at that. Yep. Yep. Um, to move on to the next one? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a couple of log examples here again. Um, the top one is if we go on the to V210 log, and below it is V210 log to progress. Um, these log logs are helpfully verbose, clearly documenting every stage of the script's progression. Okay. So, where are we now with the project? The project's deadline was extended from 2022 to the end of 2023 due to delays resulting from COVID-19. More than 55,000 works were successfully ingested into DPI, so it surpasses our 50% of our overall target of 100,000. This number equates to approximately 13,500 hours or 1.4 petabytes of content. While return to RNAs on the LTO6 and HDD is underway and will be ongoing throughout the process. And we've recently onboarded our first suppliers of FAV1 Matroska directly to the National Archive. This will hopefully be followed by others in due course. Okay, a couple of lessons. Um, it's our experience that a V210 mod with source power of 787 by 720 throws off FFM types encoder, returning a Matroska with an erroneous power of 47 by 43. We find that the stream copy fix, which you see on your screen, um, rectifies this issue. Similarly, including uh, ignore edit list one flag in your transcode recipe as your friend. This has helped us overcome frame MD5 mismatches encountered with problematic clean aperture, 708 caption streams, etc. And lastly, we have found the free file comparison tool MELD to be a very useful addition when deployed for manual frame MD5 comparison and investigation. And a, a shameless plug, if you'd like to, please visit our GitHub with the address on the screen. It's maintained by the data and the GPRES department. It has operational scripts, including our FFV1 Matroska to V210 of transcode in entirety. Also, can we generally encourage you to visit our developer Joanna White's blog. Um, in the case of the failing Frame 5 Joanna walks through tackling Frame 5 mismatches in the development of our FFV1 Matroska to V210 of transcode. Transcode Python script, which is really useful. So move on. Um, thank you very much. And that's, and that's it. Us. Thank you. Do you have any questions? And yes, and <laughs> apologies again for the technical problems. <laughs> There's no problem at all, and you got a lot of good positive vibes towards your presentation by okay. everybody in the panel and in the chat. And uh, your I think it's your colleague Stephen uh, answered all the questions, almost all the questions that were asked. So. Thank you so much, Stephen, for your Thank comments. you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Um, and, and you got a lot of compliments. Uh, people are very, uh, yeah, really see this as fantastic work, great work, everyone. So just, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, do we still have time for questions? I think so. Yeah, we've got one minute. Uh, Benjamin asks, do you have an approximate breakdown of RN? RNA file format preferences, and do you walk them through the pros and cons? Yes, so the majority of the RNAs have requested FFE1 Matroska. There's only four um, who haven't. And when we, at the beginning of the project, um, and when um, we were deciding on FFE1 Matroska for our own preservation outcome, we talked the Regional National Archives through um, FFE1 Matroska, um, you know, all of the pros and, you know, talk them through it and try to persuade um, them where we could. And we were really lucky to get most of them on board, but there's just, like I said, four who um, have gone for V210 MOV or ProRes MOV. Um, but yes, majority, yes, have gone with FFE1 Matroska, which is great. Thanks. Great, thank you so much again. Uh, you get all kinds of compliments. So, so just go through the chat because you love it. And uh, Stephen gets a lot of thanks also from people uh, in the chat. Wonderful. Um, now, thank you so much.